Florida real estate has been more volatile than ever and I get this question over and over on my channel. Jared, how is the 55 plus community doing? Are prices falling? Are they correcting? How are things going in this particular sector of houses? Obviously, Florida is a mecca for being a retirement community. The average age in Florida is higher than most and the city that we're gonna feature today has the highest average in all cities of all of Florida. It's well known for its nearly unanimous 55 plus active adult community. That's right, as you guessed it, we're talking about the villages. And today on this video update, I'm gonna showcase exactly for you what is going on in the year 2023 as far as house prices going, how long it takes to sell a house there, is inventory stacking up or is it still historically low? I can tell you this, the data is going to surprise you and if you're someone who's interested in the villages, either that you live there now, curious how your current residence is doing, maybe you're considering an investment here or even considering buying to relocate to the area. At the end of this video, you're going to have a very good idea of what to expect in the fall of 2023 and into 2024 as it relates to the real estate climate for 55 plus communities and particularly the villages. But as I dive deep in the data, do me a favor and dive below, smash the like button if you would, so as many people as possible can get this great update. In case you don't have an understanding already, the Village is a master plan retirement community located in the Central Florida area. Founded in 1975, the Village is now home to 136,000 people and is one of the fastest growing towns in the U.S. With its fantastic amenities, the community is one of the most desirable places for retirees to call home. The community itself offers something for everyone. The Villages features over 1,100 miles of multi-purpose trails for biking, walking, and jogging. It has the largest community pool in the world complete with adjustable lights and a night show, giving residents a great place to relax and have fun. You're not gonna wanna miss the video game arcade, miniature golf course, and numerous golf courses throughout the community. There's of course shuffleboard courts and outdoor recreation of all types available to residents here as well. One last point I'll make is many of you have reached out because you're buying throughout the state of Florida and you've wanted to hire me to do a deep dive on a property that you're looking at or to help you analyze data for a specific market area. That's absolutely something I can do for you and I don't have to replace your current agent. So if you're selling or buying, want feedback on what's going on, feel free to drop me an email at info at jaredjones.com. But let's get into the update. All right, everybody, first up, I'm gonna show you a graph of the 30-year fixed mortgage. When we saw home prices at the very top last June, 2022, this was the village's max average price there was somewhere around $450,000. And after the interest rates shot up, obviously home price went the opposite direction. And between the peak and between February of 2023 this year, the villages lost somewhere around 13% in average price. Before you throw anything at the screen, listen folks, the villages is made up ground. It's made up prior on 7% of that bottom in February of 2023. Price has sprung back up and it's somewhere around four or 5% away from the peak of last June. So it's not at the peak, it's down. However, that is common. That's nothing unusual. This is not a phenomenon of the villages and not a phenomenon of the 55 plus. Florida wide has the same thing and I look at city after city. But one of the things that we have to do while we're looking at this graph is right here. You can see that from June through the end of the year, we had a run up in the interest rate. And one thing we know about Florida is that Florida gets very, very touchy from a real estate perspective when interest rates get to 6.75, 7% or seven a quarter. All of a sudden, inventory starts to pile up, buyers start to back away, and essentially interest rates going that high kind of function as a de facto price reduction. It is what started the curb in the fall of last year for all of this crazy transaction volume and really shuttered it and caused the market to shift. We have to watch it because in the same line of thinking, as we take a look at this graph coming into the new year, interest rates swung way down. When I say swung way down, you're saying, well, Jared, uh, that still looks like a 6% interest rate, yes. But one thing we saw when interest rates fell below the 6.5% mark, for whatever reason, buyers were still able to make it happen. And even though through the fall months, 
Florida at large and the villages saw inventory double, okay? It went from the bottom floor of where very little for sale coming into 2022 last year to then doubling from that number. And then all of a sudden sellers going into shock, reducing prices, and then you saw a corresponding response. So we come into 2023 before the interest rates shift from those high 7% numbers that we saw around Christmas, there was this period of time where people were picking off some really good deals, which ran the price down February of this year. So February, there was a low from the high. You saw this big adjustment from June, where it's mid $450,000 price point for the villages. It dropped price February of 2023 into the upper 300. So a lot of that ground was gained back because when the rates came down the beginning of this year for a series of about two to three months, it spurred on the traffic again, started to bring inventories down a little bit more. One of the things that will yet to be seen is the fact that interest rates seem to be pushing on as we're coming down to the middle stretch of 2023. And this is something we have to watch folks, because a lot of these interest rates where there are now pushing against 7%, that's been a number to prove that buyers tend to back away from the market. It tends to drive inventory a little bit higher, create situations where sellers have to negotiate more in order to sell their homes. And I got to tell you folks, we might have to buckle in for more of those high interest rates because it seems the market is now getting used to and accustomed to the idea that the Fed's keeping interest rates high. I think a lot of this period that we just came through, January, February, and then part of March where interest rates came really low again, and I say really low again, six and a half percent, six and a quarter, six percent. That was a range that fired the market back up, but it's jumped again. And as soon as it leaps past six and a half percent, April numbers come out and all of a sudden our pendings drop. The amount of homes going on a contract drops. It basically dampens buyer interest, actually hurts their capacity because it's not that the buyers are just out there trying to negotiate with sellers because interest rates went up. It's because the lender calls them and says, hey, that pre-approval you have for $400,000, interest rates went up. Now you can only get 350. Well, now they're shopping and trying to bring the price down because that's where they live now because payments have gotten higher because of borrowing costs. But it's not altogether a bad thing for the villages. The villages has a good base of cash buyers. I'm going to show you exactly where that means. But one of the predictions I got to make for you folks, I think you're going to see us touching the 7% and maybe 7% plus interest rates further into 2023 because the Fed is still fighting hard, the inflation battle. They're possibly pushing up interest rates at the very least. Interest rates are gonna be held more than likely for a longer period of time because it looks like inflation is just super sticky. Even though they've pushed the rates to where they have, they're probably at a position where there's a great chance the market's betting that interest rates are gonna to have to go even higher in order to slow the market down because things are just becoming so unaffordable. All right, folks, I want to give you some relative idea of the marketplace for the villages. So the first thing I'm going to show you right here is Florida active inventory overall. Okay. Now you're going to see down here, this is a graph going back to January, 2017 to the present. And I kind of want to give you an idea. It's very important for anybody measuring the market and trying to get an idea of, is this a balanced time? Is the market safe? You really want to look at how it was before the pandemic, because that's really a great measure of kind of a normal balanced market dynamic. And then when you look at now, we're in 2023, what are we thinking is gonna happen in 2024? You need to have that insight before the pandemic. Can we all agree that's a great idea? So here we go. I want you to see inventory patterns for the entire state of Florida. Look at this. Most of the state of Florida required around 150,000 homes on the markets. So there were times it dipped below that, but you can see as interest rates slammed down 2021, we had inventory come all the way down to 40 some thousand units as a bottom. And then we have interest rates climb and climb and climb into the new year. And then all of a sudden interest rates drop again. And then it started to absorb some of this inventory. Now we're going to look at one more chart corresponding with that. I want to look at the average price for Florida as we head to the villages. So let's flip that right now. You can see average price in Florida was kind of just normal appreciation. Wasn't really soaring 2022. It shoots to a peak May, June. Looks like Florida hit a peak of $550,475. You can see the marketplace bottomed in December at 486,000. That's a pretty big drop, right? It's around 65,000. So the marketplace saw about a 10% fluctuation. Interest rates come down in the new year 
and then price kind of picked back up to where it is now. So it actually went from a bottom of 486,000. So folks, the state average is roughly four to 5% below those peak numbers, summer of last year. That's where it's sitting right now. But now we'll look at the villages. MSA is a governmental term for a statistical area, a metropolitan statistical area. And I'm gonna tell you, I've looked deep into this data, so I'm telling you that this is actually going to include a little wider, slightly wider area than just the villages proper. So if you, if you talk about the villages city area and you look at the MSA, the MSA is a slightly broader path, but it's not very far, it's very, very close. But this is data that you can only get access to if you're a realtor. This is behind the realtor paywall, licensed data directly from the multiple listing service. So the data is solid. So before 2019, you can see that most of the activity here for active inventory kind of hover around 450. Let's call it 450, 460, 475. It then dipped. We had a bottom of around 193 in active inventory, which is very low. That represents probably about a month worth of sales activity here, which means that if you didn't list a house, all the homes that were on the market would be sold in literally 30 days time and there'd be nothing left. So essentially everything that was hitting the market in June of 2021 was literally selling immediately. And if you had any type of house with four walls on the exterior and halfway decent home, you probably could name any price you wanted right here and you would have gotten it. But as we saw inventory rise, we, you know, this is obviously, I talked about the correlation to uh, why that took place. You can see this was June peak and it just got higher from there. July went to 480, then 462, then 536, then 562. So in this is common, by the way, folks, we had the last peak around November before it started to kind of trail off. Now, why did it trail off? It wasn't trailing off exclusively because selling was high. You know, a lot of people pull their house off the market for December. It's Christmas season, all that kind of stuff. And then the market kind of continues on. Now you can see it's a little bit of a downward, almost sideways trend. And that's where we are today, folks. This right here shows the change from one year to the next. You can see very common. We're hovering right over 100% to last year for the same time period. The month prior in March was 108%. And look, you can see back in December, January, it was at 140, 46%, 136%, so to speak over last year and again people love to make headlines out of these types of data points but you know it's up a hundred percent what really matters is how far over the historic norms remember i told you the historic norms matter yes inventory went up a hundred percent but it went a hundred percent off of a record low inventory levels that wouldn't last one month all right, folks, let's look at corresponding price for the Villages metro area you have in August 2020. I think that's a good equilibrium kind of pre-pandemic. All right, folks, January 2020, average price in the Village was 259000 Somewhere around the peak, July 2022, 415000 was the average. And then it bottomed out, I think somewhere in February, 356000 So pretty big swing, right? So while this graph doesn't look like much, look at this folks, you had $415,000 average here. The bottom, the bottom in February between average price transition from the peak was somewhere around 50 some thousand dollars. 52,000 is, is quick math, right at 14%. Obviously we saw it kind of jump back. I mean, that's a big single month jump. Um, people were snagging properties at a little bit better price. You can see the amount of closed sales came back a little more, that fever of competition and the marketplace hit 391,000, but then in April, it dropped back to 362,000. You see, price point has adjusted quite a bit in the villages for now. Now listen, I don't want hate mail in the comments, but let's take a look at the average year over year, folks. You can see April, the most recent record we have is nearly 6% off of year, this is year over year percentage of change. So 362,313, which was down because month over month, uh, March 2023 was 391,000. So big dip month over month. That's like a 10% downward swing between April and March, folks. We'll keep our eye on how price shakes out as 2023 materializes. I'm not wishing anything negative on anybody, but I'm telling you, I see interest rates being much higher in the second half of the year than they were much of the first half of the year, which again, does not bode well for pricing here. One of the interesting thing about the villages is how much cash sales activity they have. Nearly one in two home sales in the villages is all cash. In fact, 
in April, it was 51.4%. And again, that is exactly 5.7% below last year, which happens to be exactly what price was down last year. But you can see in the months prior, 56%, check this out, November, 60% of the sales were in cash. And folks, this isn't a surprise. A lot of this is the nature of the villages. I mean, a lot of the folks living in this neighborhood, the average age is 68 for this community. And a lot of these folks, when interest rates go high, they can say, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna pay all in cash. I'm not gonna borrow anything. As you're looking at this graph showing 51 to 56% recently, all buyers here paying in cash, to give you a comparison to the state of Florida, state of Florida average is somewhere around 35, 38% depending on the month. So quite a bit more cash activity in this marketplace. And the interesting thing is we talk about cash sales, we talk about closings. And a lot of folks would say at this point, hey, Jared, you know what? You just mentioned the 30-year fix and how much of an impact that has the entire marketplace. And you know why would it matter in the villages if everybody's paying cash? Well, the thing you have to understand is cash is dealt with on comfort. So people that are paying all cash are usually coming into the equation and saying, Am I being smart with my money? Do they feel comfortable putting the cash out there at the present time in the market? And that's ultimately, it's buyer sentiment that affects cash buying because cash buyers are typically, they're making a more careful decision. When a buyer goes all in on cash, they're saying to themselves, will this house be worth significantly less next month? or six months from now. And if they're uncertain about that, or if they feel like the answer is it's gonna correct big time in the next six months, then in all likelihood, they're going to wait. So as I mentioned earlier, comfort level, buyer sentiment, that's a huge factor for the villages. And if buyer sentiment trails off, if buyers feel like, hey, you know what? The future is gonna be better than now, that will curb sell off because a huge percentage of this marketplace is cash and cash buyers are thinking buyers. They're not as quick to sign for a mortgage and borrow all the money. And as a result, they're going to be a little bit more cautious with their purchasing decisions. Let's take a look at closed sale activity, folks. You can see that you could kind of cut a line at 150 units a month for the villages. So if you go pre-pandemic, you can kind of see that the marketplace kind of rise and fell right about 150 units. We had peak gusts of nearly 300 units in a single month, and which is incredible when you saw that some of those months there was literally only 190 homes on the market. So you're like literally as fast as they can be brought to the market, they were bought up and there was very little in static inventory over time. You can see folks, this is what's caused inventory to pick up is that we've had this kind of correction in turnover, closed sales. Closed sales bottom down here in January at 111 units. Last month, they're back up to around 183 units. Look at this, folks. I'm gonna give you some very important analogies that you need to know to actually understand the pace of this market right now. Look at this, folks. April 2023 represents about 14% off in volume, which isn't bad. You can see this is the scary thing right here. Okay, this is really what causes prices to decelerate when you're seeing numbers off 28, 30% of the marketplace, just a big pullback in how much is being closed. Look at June, folks, 45% trail off in closed sales. All right, folks, let me show you one more thing that I wanna talk about. It's called months of supply. Now, months of supply means how much time, how many months would it take to sell off all the active inventory that's in the marketplace right now? This is the ultimate factor of supply and demand because it takes in consideration two things. Number one, how many homes are out there, which is the supply side of the graph. Number two, how much closings are taking place right now? This is incredibly important because when you look at the villages, if you look at the times when price was really, really high and you saw times where the market tipped and price was decelerating very quickly, you can see that the momentum of change could be set to what's called months of supply. So when months of supply goes up, prices will tend to drop. If months of supply goes down, prices will tend to go up. Now looking at the screen here, you can see back in June, there were 419 homes on the market in active inventory. Now that same month, 178 homes sold. So 178 homes selling on a monthly basis versus a 419 active inventory is very low months of supply. That's 2.3. That means it would take a little more than two months 
to sell off all the inventory in the market. That's a very, very seller favored market. Buyers are in trouble at 2.35. There's going to be a little bit more contentiousness. It's going to be more multiple offers. Seller is going to have control of the market. If you look at November, when it went to 562 units, it wasn't just about the 562 units, folks, because as you can see, the difference between 420 and 560, not necessarily massive, right? That's not a big difference. But the problem is at the same time inventory was at 562 units, the buyer activity slammed to the floor. So supply was up, but demand was way down and it had a massive swing impact on price. That's when you saw price swing down 12%, 13 percentage points. Now what had taken place? Well, at 562 units, only 124 of those units were absorbed, putting it at a 4.5%, putting the marketplace here at a 4.5 month of supply, meaning it would take four and a half months to sell off all the inventory. Meaning if no other listings hit the market, at this rate of absorption, it would take four and a half months for this inventory to sell off. Now, again, that this was 2.3, this is 4.5. It had almost doubled. So again, folks, from here at 2.3 to here at 4.5 is not a dramatic swing, okay? But that's all it took to have prices take a dramatic swing in the other direction. Now, as you can see, when we looked at the price graph a moment ago, what was taking place on price in 2023? You could see that much like this active inventory line, price was just kind of sliding sideways. It wasn't really falling and it wasn't really climbing. Now, what is taking place now is you have 509 homes on the market and about 183 homes sold at the same time. So that peak of movement, buyers kind of getting in the market again, working as well with those cash buyers that are now jumping back in the market because they're getting a little bit more invigorated when they saw interest rates come down more comfortable. We're now at a 2.8% time frame of months of supply of sell-off. So about just inside of three months here. So what we can see is that 2.3 represented a very, very hot market. In fact, in fact, it was the end of the peak. 2.3 sell off very, very fast. And again, you can see over here is 2.8. 2.8 is not very far from here. But what we have to see is how well will June do this year? I'm talking 2023. And I've got some insight for you on that because that's total prediction territory. But one thing we do know is four and a half months, the market does not like it. So if we end up seeing inventory trend up just a little bit, doesn't have to go very high over where it is in April. If it inventory starts to trend up going further into 2023, at the same time, interest rates get really high and spike the ball again on buyers where they end up pulling back. You can see the month of supply trend, that metric goes back up, immediately dampens the market and affects price. Now, one last note I want to call to your attention. Four and a half months of supply was the peak right here, 4.5. If you look at historic averages, when I got in real estate, I was always told that six months of supply was a what's called a quote unquote normal market. Okay, six months of supply. Now, I've been in the marketplace for a long time, 20 years as a real estate broker, sold thousands of homes. I would tell you the more that I've been in the marketplace, I would say that really four to six months is a normal market. And anything over six months is a very slow market and buyers have a great deal of control. So like whenever you saw the marketplace just really dive in 2008 in Florida, the reason that took place is inventory went off the charts high. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of extra homes across the state. Buyers pulled back. It absolutely cratered the price. So right now, all it took in Florida as it stands is us to get to a four and a half month supply. I, I was always told, hey, four months of supply is still a hot seller's market and sellers have control and sellers can call the shots. But folks, we just witnessed 4.5 months and all it was 4.5 months of supply to take place to actually have the price crater. And again, it could have been a psychological thing, folks. It could have just been the fact that sellers saw such a dramatic shift from what they were feeling for the last two and a half years, right? If you're in the marketplace for two and a half years and all you've heard for 18 months plus is 
as soon as I list my house, 90 people are going to show up through the door and I'm going to get 25 offers and I'm going to pick the one that's willing to buy me a vacation and buy me a Ferrari and pay 30,000 over appraisal. That's what sellers have been hearing for two years. So when that all of a sudden stops in the fall of last year, sellers are thinking, whoa, this could really be the end. Like this is the collapse that we've, you know, that we saw in 2008 happening again. And maybe sellers over adjusted at a 4.5 month of supply range in November yet to be seen. Cause I'm telling you folks, I looked at June. I took a sneak peek into what's called pending inventory for the villages. So I pulled pendings because we're in June. We don't know exactly how the village is going to hang uh, versus its historic numbers of sell off in June. I got to tell you folks, when I looked at pendings, pendings look to be setting some very low numbers for June and July. Okay. And remember pendings are homes that were on the market, gone under contract. It represents a future sold home because after the home goes in pending, it stays there for 30 to 60 days. And eventually the home is supposed to close. And sometimes they don't close. Sometimes properties fall out and they come back to active. But the point I'm making is I pulled pendings because I want to be able to make some predictions about where we're going. And some of the predictions I'm seeing is this bounce back in interest rates coming in the summer of 2023 is softening the turnover already in the villages. Again, I'm not saying this to be hype. The content is going to speak for itself because I'm just going to share the data. I'm not going to over influence the market. So while I'm saying when I'm looking into the summer and going into the fall season of 2023, I'm saying it doesn't look good. I'm not trying to say that, that it's definitely going to be not good because as I'm saying, you know, we, we have the headwinds, I believe, coming of higher interest rates. I think that's something that we can count on. Mortgage rates will remain high. I think cash buyers might get a little skittish with what's coming in the fall and into 2024 because the Federal Reserve, the central bankers are predicting unemployment's going to go up. There's going to be economic turmoil increasing. We're going to be more towards a recession pattern going at the end of this year. Those are things that we have to look at with open eyes. Okay. One of the things that will be seen is how motivated it are the sellers this time around. Okay. So let's say that we repeat the same cycle that we saw last year. So after June, July, what happened? Buyer activity slumped. Okay. Act inventory climbed. All right. Are we going to see a similar pattern this fall and our sellers going to be less psyched out about it. There's a reality that the marketplace, if we hit four and a half months of supply or worse, we go towards five months of supply, will the marketplace be in the same psychological position, the sellers that is, as it was last year? Now, I will tell you a lot of the folks that were chiming in on my channel that were saying, I'm trying to buy in the villages. They were frustrated because a lot of folks in the villages were late to adjust their price. And we saw a lot of inventory just piling on like it was just getting higher and higher and higher and higher and it looked like maybe coming into the new year all the sellers at least the very motivated ones got with it cut the prices they were next out the door but all i'm doing is looking at the data and sharing with you the realities of what i'm seeing the biggest future telling data point i have is that i'm looking at pendings coming up meaning i'm looking at what the future sell-off will be in june and july and I'm telling you, I am not seeing the numbers there. I'm not seeing anything along the lines of trending where they should be on historic averages. Either last year or even pre-pandemic levels, it looks like the next couple of months are going to be below the mark and inventory is going to be a little bit higher as we see interest rates staying where they're at and possibly going up even more. So that's the update for now. Let's continue the conversation in the comments below. If you're in the villages now, do you like it there? Do you hate it? What do you think the future of this marketplace holds? If you're in the market there now buying or selling, tell us how your experience is going or how did it go if you bought there in the last two years? I'd love to hear about it down below. I will tell you that we are creating a 55 plus playlist where we are going to feature a lot of the most populous 55 plus communities throughout the Florida marketplace. So if you click on the channel, Jared Jones, the Florida local, you'll find the 55 plus folder and we will be building that out with more communities as we go. And as always, we're covering all kinds of topics, Florida news and real estate. 
So if you're not already a channel subscriber, hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss any videos. And if you've already listened this far, do me a favor, smash the like button. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you on the next one.